Hey guys, so I was wrong about something. I don't know what it means yet, but I can tell you I was definitely wrong. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different because I'm staying at a friend's house in Virginia Beach right now. Uh, I'm studying to be, um, I'm in class to get my PNP, my Project Management Professional Certification. That's right, I am studying to become a project manager, so uh, you know, I said I was wrong at the beginning of this video. I should be prepared to be wrong about a lot of stuff, but the only difference is that uh, I won't have to admit that I was wrong once I'm a project manager and have that PMP. Anyway, I was watching Netflix last night, uh, the Chris Rock special, and someone posted on Twitter a picture of an MTLB with a World War II era anti-aircraft gun on it. And I immediately questioned it. And, you know, number one, just because someone posts something on Twitter with a bunch of text, it doesn't make that information real, no matter how badly you want that information to be real. And number two, I don't know what happened to Chris Rock, but researching this weapon system was way more interesting than hearing five-year-old jokes about the Kardashians. So then a video of this weapon system came out, and I was like, all right, you know, that's, it's a lot harder to fake a video than it is imagery. So now I do believe that these converted MTLB weapon systems do exist, although I don't know whether they're being used in Ukraine. So a couple of things to start. The MTLB is a Soviet-era armored personnel carrier, um, it's also used to carry cargo. It was really designed as a battle taxi, you know, uh, it's designed to take troops to the battlefield and protect them against small arms fire and shell fire. Now, it's roughly similar to the U.S. Army's M113, uh, and they're both 1950s era's era weapons, they're both developed around the same time. Now, the anti-aircraft gun that's slapped on this thing is a 1950s-era mounted anti-aircraft gun called a 2M-3. And this is what gave me pause. The shells used by this gun are Russian 25 by uh, 218 millimeter. There's three types. Two different kinds are high-explosive self-destruct, and one is armor-piercing. It, it makes sense to have anti-aircraft shells self-destruct because they might be shot over a city or whatever. Now, these guns are fed through 95 round belts, and they're manually crewed. The gunner sits on the left, the ammunition feeds on the right. There's a couple of problems with this right off the bat, and this kind of made me believe that it isn't real. First off, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of this weapon system? Okay, maybe it could be used as an anti-drone weapon, but the sighting system is really archaic, and drones would require a kinetic kill. None of those shells being fired by this weapon system are proximity fused, meaning they don't explode when they get close to the target. Remember, they're, they're timed explosions. So you're gonna have to hit the drone to destroy it. And this is gonna be really hard because this weapon system is not a radar guided gun. It's not a radar guided auto cannon. So this would be like trying to hit a large box of cereal that's hanging from the goal post of a field goal and you're trying to detect this hanging box of cereal while you're at the other end zone <laughs> on a football field. Like, that's going to be really, really hard to do. It's going to be hard to detect these drones with the naked eye. So, okay, maybe this is an infantry support weapon. But this thing, this tower, is so big that every anti-tank guided missile within several kilometers is going to be aiming at this thing. So it's, it's just too high up off the ground. So this vehicle has no clear effective purpose from the start. Now here's a second problem. The ammunition for this weapon has been, hasn't been manufactured since 1984. It doesn't make a lot of sense to employ this weapon because you could take, you know, your normal Russian uh, 30 millimeter autocannon, the uh, 2A42, the same autocannon that's on the BMP and the Hind, throw that thing on an MTLB and call it a day. And now you have, you can use modern ammunition. So that's an issue. The third issue is that Russia has plenty of BMPs, ones and BMP2s that they can refurbish if they need an infantry support weapon. Look at Cover Cabal's video on how many, how many tanks Russia has left. I'll have that video at the end of this video. Um, so if Russia needs an anti-drone weapon, the ZSU-23-4, the Sheikah, would still be a more appropriate weapon, and they should still have those in the inventory and that particular kind of shell is still being manufactured. So the third problem is that every time you repurpose a piece of equipment, 
to be used for one purpose, you can't use it for another purpose. And I don't see Russia wasting MTLBs on a platform that's ineffective when they have older, more effective weapon systems like the Sheikah. So I don't deny that these pictures are real, but it's this sentence that gives me pause. Russia started to wield ancient cannons from warships on top of armored vehicles to help Russian cannon fodder feel safer during bonsai assaults on Ukrainian positions. Now, this came from the tweet you know, where, where I initially saw these pictures. And what's crazy is that just because you want something to be true doesn't mean it's true. And just because these vehicles exist doesn't mean they're, they're going to be used in the manner which you implied. I encountered the same thing like last week when a Chinese democracy supporter claimed that China was reloading shells from Russia and Ukraine. And I made a whole video about it where I showed Russian shells and Ukrainian shells and how this wouldn't be the kind of shell that China was reloading, along with other reasons why reloading these shells is impractical. And the guy's response to me was, well, I'm not a military expert. Well, then why the hell are you posting? <laughs> Maybe don't talk about stuff you don't understand. You don't see me talk about Navy stuff. Department of the Boat people, I don't understand that stuff, all right? People have asked me to do videos about the Nord Stream pipeline and the, the rail uh, derailment in Palestine, Ohio. Two things I know less about in the Navy are pipelines and, <laughs> you know, rail. So I don't talk about stuff I don't know. So that being said, you have to be very careful when someone puts text on a picture and claims that picture to be true. I mean, heck, it took me 10 minutes to find a couple of pictures of an American-owned Hind helicopter that we use for aggressor training and claim that American helicopters had so many parts problems and were so bad that we had to use Soviet-era aircraft. And I think that while these pictures of the MTLB with this old World War II 1950s-era autocannon on it might be real, I would reserve judgment until I actually saw one in combat. And I don't know whether that's going to happen. It would be interesting to see whether this is a mass production or a mass um, <clears throat> alteration of these MTLBs to use these older weapons. Um, and that's actually pretty much it. I'm training for another marathon right now, so I got to go running. And thank you so much for watching the Covert Cabal video. I'll have a link to that after this. Thank you. It's me, Captain Bannon of the documentary Team Yankee. When I'm not kicking commie butts, I'm wearing t-shirts from Ryan Macbeth available at Bunker Branding, Knife Hands, High Mars, Landmines, Patriot, and even my favorite, the Tow Missile. Mushna, we want t-shirt too. Take a hike, commie. So come on down to Bunker Branding and take a stand for what's really important about America, capitalism.